Hello and welcome back to Space Engineer Experiment. And today we're going to look at WASD angle thrusting. What is WASD angle thrusting? Well, it's WASD angle thrusting with your ships. All right, so jokes aside, WASD with angle thrusters, which angle thrusters look really, really cool, especially the sideways thrusters like so. It could work pretty well with your forwards and backward thrust too, but angle thrust such as this is it achievable using WSAD and without scripts. So I honestly done this once before angle thrusting, but with the script and that is using this right over here. Whips subgrid thrust. So if your ship has subgrid thrusters such as a rotor and thrusters like this, this one has one rotor carrying four thrusters at a 45 degree angle for a downwards right propulsion thruster and also a upwards right propulsion thruster as well. And as easy as putting in scripts, if you're able to, I know some console players cannot do it. And that's why we're going to talk about doing it without scripts afterwards. But putting a script here is again, relatively easy as always, always go to the programmable block, go to edit, go to browse scripts and search for that script. So in this case, this will be whips subgrid thrust, which I just type in sub to look for it. So once you have that in there, put this in your editor and it's as easy as check code, hit okay. If you need to recompile and run and it automatically detects the main cockpit or seat that you're in. I have the helm on this bad boy here. And that is going to enable these thr thrusters on the subgrid to work perfectly fine. So here's an example of that. So forward and backward has nothing with it because it's not part of the subgrid, but our left and right, here's left and here's right, even with the stopping of it. And then since it's angled for up and down, you see that we can use up and down motion as well. So we could achieve angle thrusting with WSAD keys with the script very, very easily. And what's great about it is that it does add a significant amount of push in terms of the thrusters. So going left, we reach 10 meters per second in like two seconds. So one, two, roughly. But without this subgrid thrusters, let's say they turn them off, you see that it's really, really slow to get to 10 meters per second on the left-hand side. And of course, it takes forever to stop. Same with up and down. But of course, with angled thrusting, you get some of the power to go left, right, up and down in this particular case. So going down will give us pretty much two seconds to 10 meters per second, and it'll stop us pretty quickly. So you get some momentum from these angle thrusters, which is really, really useful. It's just basically more efficient using less thrusters for different angles. But yeah, that is the script version of it, which is, which is really easy to just plop on and do. But can we achieve this through no script? And the answer to that question is yes, as you see right here, left and right propulsion up and down propulsion angle thrusters using WASD and of course, no grips whatsoever. So no programmable block. So how do we achieve this? Well, it's kind of like the vector thrusting thing we did previously. We used event controllers. So we have an event controller right here and for the different directions. So we have up, down, left, and right, as you see here. So basically it's kind of set up the same way as vector thrusting as well, minus the rotation of a rotor. This rotor is more locked in this case, but here is the main left propulsion thruster and we have the main right propulsion thruster. So basically we're going to tell our event controller right over here, let's say left propulsion, we're going to go to thrust percentage in event equal greater to I put 80% you put 100% 50% or less whatever case you want and choose the available block so this is the left thrust that so we chose left thrust in this case and then use the setup actions and chose toggle block on for the right propulsion subgrid thruster which is basically four thrusters because they all go right side up and down at the same time so two bar one has setup action of on and off for this thruster here, U1, which is up one, up two, 
and then down one and down two so up one and two down one and two is down here towards the bottom and basically toggling them on and off based on the threshold of 80 percent and of course you got to use those subgrid thrusters so subgrid thrusters right here the r ones here which is right turn it off put thruster override on them basically so with the event control setup like that this left propulsion thruster is going to push at 80 percent or more and activate this four subgrid thrusters to go left propulsion because it has that angle to do so now obviously you do the same thing on the right propulsion side set up the one where it's the right propulsion static one and have your angled one up and downs to do thruster override for right propulsion as well and then of course it gets tricky because then you have two more event controllers i have them kind of hidden down here hiding around the battery so it's just going to be controlling the up thrust and the down thrust so one event controller has down thrust at 80 percent so once it hits that it's going to trigger the top two thrusters that are angled here and here to push down and then vice versa going upwards 80 percent threshold this one and this set will propulsion upwards so that's basically how it kind of works with the event controller so once again left propulsion right propulsion then you have your upwards and then your downwards as you see all six of them are running all five here in the bottom are running because there's only one upwards that's static so it utilizes all those thrusters and it reaches pretty efficient speeds at the same time so one thing that was interesting between the two so basically script versus non-script obviously you're actually using three less blocks so you don't need four event controls you just need a programming block that's one and two power becomes an interesting thing so with the script itself i normally had two batteries on here on this ship so i'm in the script one and floating left and right using all the proportions that's possible so going left one two gets us 10 meters per second which is very similar to the non-script one one two the stopping power seems to be very similar but it uses more power with the script for some reason so basically one two ten meters per second one two is when you stop or very close to it but i had to add two more batteries just to get this running without it to without going over the battery level so basically let's try it again if we go one two ten meters per second stop it goes 58 percent power and then if we jump into the non-script version, so one, two is 10 meters per second still. So one, two, and then one, two, and maybe close to 2.5 to three to stop. But as you see, 10 meters per second, and then the stopping is 35% power instead of 58. So a little bit of a difference there for some reason. And that may be because the programming block is running while that's happening or that the thrusters are constantly changing um, on their override so basically with the script itself you'll see that the thruster override is constantly changing right over here so especially when i'm running this like quickly and if i go into one of the thrusters you'll see that it's constantly shifting and changing and everything like that kind of hard to tell but let's see if we could get to max speed here or close to it and go look for ion thruster mm, actually no it's it's maxed out and then slowly dwindles down is the slowly dwindling down the issue where it kills the power so the stopping distance in time in terms of seconds is very similar maybe slightly off but the power consumption is actually pretty significant in a way All right, we're hitting 35% power. We get 70 and stop. And it's still 35% and we're slowing down. Maybe a little bit slower than the other one. Let's try this out. Once we hit 70. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
roughly nine seconds for it to totally stop once it hits roughly 70 meters per second. Her power consumption is not that bad there, but it's not constant power consumption anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. What's also interesting is that when I'm actually utilizing them, it says 30% here over, instead of 35. That's really interesting. So once we hit 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. About a second difference, roughly. Not the perfect science, but it was close. Yeah, it's interesting how power consumption using the angle thruster is 30%, but stopping is 58. And the non-script one is constantly 35, whether it's going max power or slowing down. But I can't complain too much because we could successfully do WASD angle thrusting without script. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little experiment. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to comment down below. You can just say hi. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.